three all the way up to our junior Olympics and our Excel teammates. Uh, and they compete across the country and actually across the, uh, across the, the Midwest and the West. Uh, we have ice hockey programs in the, in the winter when we have hockey, uh, martial arts programs, our outdoor recreation programs. We have a great youth trail running program, youth mountain bike programs, paddle boarding programs. Just try to do as much different things for the kiddos outdoors as possible. Uh, our special populations program, youth sports, we offer it all from soccer, flag football, middle school sports, we just wrapped up uh, Kara Middle School uh, cross country or middle, middle school track uh, tournament last week. So it was a great opportunity for our local kids to compete against kids throughout Jefferson County down at the, uh, the big track uh, in Lakewood. Uh, tennis programs and again just a variety of, of activities to keep our kids busy. As Alvin mentioned, we have uh, a lot of folks coming into our rec centers and more and more every year. These are the numbers from 2017. You can see that we had over 120,000 people that visited Buchanan last year, over 56,000 folks that came in a wolf, and those are people that had passes. So the individual drop-ins so are the folks that just come in on a daily visit. We had over 35,000 of those. Out of all those folks, we had over 93,000, almost 94,000 folks that visited one of our two pools. We taught 3,700 fitness classes, and we'll talk a little bit more about where we teach some of those here in a second. Uh, we had over 15,000, almost 16,000 ice skating visits, and that's daily visits and past sales. Over 14,000 boating and stand-up paddle boarding at the lake, and we taught over 7,500 swim lessons last year. Uh, just some additional numbers for you. We averaged 205 kids in our summer camp, as I mentioned. Uh, we had about 700 individual kiddos that were total for the summer last year. Uh, we had 137 kids participate in our gymnastics summer camp. Our specialty camps, we had 223. One of our specialty camps just occurred last Saturday. Mr. Ellis and I were out here uh, tying knots and untying knots and grilling hot dogs for about 35 kiddos to teach them to fish. Uh, but we also offer different types of programs like Lego camps and fencing camps. Uh, we had 28 special population uh, camp participants throughout the summer last year. Our uh, school age, 293 folks participated in that program with our before and after school. We had over a thousand kids that participated in our youth sports programs. I just mentioned some of those a little bit ago. 469 kids are the average attendance for our monthly gymnastics programs. Uh, we had over 890 adults that played, and that does not include pickleball. Those are uh, that whole other uh, amount of folks that are participating in programs. That 890 just counts our basketball players, our softball players, and those in volleyball and tennis. And then we had 92 special uh, population participants that, that participated. So you can see it's a very busy uh, location around uh, the two rec centers. And we're going to jump into the financial next. I'm going to hand it off. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Out of those 120,000 visits, do you know what part of the facility they used when they came in? Uh, we have some tracking. With that, so we try to do the best we can as far as heading to the pool. You click on the pool, they're going to the fitness center. We click on that. We have a lot of folks that will come in and use both. They'll come in, lift, and then go into the pool, into the hot tub, or vice versa. Um, so we do the best we can, but it. Do you know what the breakdown of that? I, I don't have that information with me today. Maybe I missed it, but is the new art center location, is that still part of the recreation district? So it is. So the Center for the Art moved to their new location earlier in the year. So currently we run uh, yoga programs out of there. We have an art program that we run. Our summer camps will be running out of some of our summer camps. will be running out of there. So we're using it sort of as overflow. So as rooms are filling up here and space is filling up, then we can sort of adjust over there to backfill here. But so. it's independent of the recreation district? No, nope. so that's a piece of our property that's right next door here at the Miller House. No, I'm no. talking about the new one. Oh, the new one. No, that is independent of ours. Yes, we are not running any programs with the new CAD. Okay. Any other questions for Brian? Okay, so financials. Um, as all of our staff, as well as our board, our, you know, our job is to be judiciary responsible. We do that in a way to make sure that constituents um, feel that 
we're using your tax dollars respectfully and managing them in a very um, correct way. But this is a snapshot of our unaudited revenues. Uh, because I know with some of these improvements, everybody's there's some comments of, well, the user groups need to just pay for those and not ask the taxpayers. As a park and rec district, we do a very nice job of, of um, charging fees, and then those help defray our overall, some of our operation costs. Um, so we receive about 34% of our funding through property taxes, so that's that yellow section there. And then the rest, the 66% of it is coming through user fees. So most park and rec districts from a leadership standpoint, they do look at that. I would say to you that Evergreen Park and Rec District is one of the best. Go check it out. Go check out Denver because their ratio to property taxes or even foothills. We are doing a good job still receiving user fees at an affordable cost that, that our constituents are saying it's not too costly because we want to be affordable providing quality programs to you. Whether it's sailing, whether it's fitness. And we do collect user fees, but it's the almighty question I get, well, I don't use it, so I don't want to pay for it. And then I also have, well, I'm a taxpayer, and you're charging me way too much money. So it's always a delicate balance. But I would offer to you, Carl brought up a good question. We do what's called a cost recovery uh, exercise with all of our staff. So cost recovery is basically revenue to expenditures, and then you have your net income. Many of the recreation programs do complete Oh, well, they all complete as um, their staff a cost recovery um, and a net income. So I don't have specifics, but for an example, fitness is making over $34,000 revenue to expenditures, their bottom line. They, it looks like they're making a profit. But when you start also adding in all of the um, administrative costs that try to help insurance, HR, IT, heating and electricity, those aren't all specifically in some of those budgets. Those are in more so the uh, GNA or the actual facilities themselves. But as you can see, 66% fees and charges through all of our facilities, including the lake house, and then 34% is coming from your taxpayers, or tax, property taxes and ownership tax. So some people are saying, you know, what's going on here? Um, we have done our homework. In fact, we have been working diligently, I have, for five plus years on a lot of things that staff are coming to us on our needs and our growing demands to our, from our community members. Um, we are continuously gathering facts. We completed a 2013 community-wide survey. 2015, we updated our 2011, so for 2011, 12, 13, 14, 15, we were continually trying to knock out the goals and objectives. These are all on the website, so if you would like to read them, please do. Um, 2015, our Buchanan Park Rec Center improvements the feasibility study. Then we went from there after the feasibility study to an opinion strategy survey and then to date with our citizens task force and now we're out at the community. Um, some of the key findings here is <coughs> through all of this is expand Buchanan Rec Center focusing on three diff distinct areas, adding a gym, adding additional fitness space, running a, a track um, with a running track and expansion of the pool. Um, so that is what we are continuing to study on now. Um, and, and appropriately so, because we are looking at all of our facilities, because we have to look at Wolf. You know, well, you got Wolf Rec Center doing that. Well, we have one gym there. Um, we're already at capacity with that gym for a lot of the programming aspects of it. Um, the trails are important. You, we heard loud and clear through every, every survey, the trails are important to you as a community member. In connectivity, where EPRD owns trails and manages trails. <coughs> we heard loud and clear as well. Maintain and improve what you have. And I think there's good <coughs> record in that. Like I said, this room was a carpeted room. It wasn't being used. We've changed out spaces. Our racquetball court has been turned into a spin fitness room. We changed out the weight room at Wolf Rec Center. 
We have made improvements. We have done energy efficiencies across the district to save us money on our utility costs. So we have been listening and paying attention to you all um, and continuing to, you know, make sure that you have confidence in us that we are handling our, your taxpayers well. Um, and that we have a broad support throughout the whole district because one thing that we learned in the 16 that came out is well i would support you on all of these things but it was only specific to buchanan so they wanted us to go broader and make sure we were looking at wolf we were looking at all of our district amenities that were providing greater recreational activity opportunities for our kids and our seniors i mean i'm talking zero to a hundred um, and expanding the programs for children, whether it be swimming lessons, whether it be specialized camps, whether it be after school programs to help make sure our kiddos are staying safe out there. <coughs> I'm gonna turn it over to Brian. Um, and as he's doing that, like I said, uh, this is something that it has it just doesn't keep um, changing. I, we're seeing a great deal of consistency through all the messaging that we're receiving from not only our users, but maybe our non-users, our trail users that might not be in our gym or might not be in our facilities. But Brian's going to share some of the facts because that's important to know. As I mentioned earlier, you see growth in some of these programs and fitness alone over the past couple of years. You can see where we've doubled the amount of participants uh, in our fitness classes. <coughs> In our facility passes over the last couple of years, you can see where they've continued to go to increase. Uh, just going back to fitness, she mentioned uh, this room having carpet, and we've added the wood floors. We've done the same thing next door in the other room uh, that we have. There are 